This video is on titrations. Raja says hi. So this is on titrations and titration curves. Uh, the typical titration setup is where we're going to have a ring stand here. The ring stand is going to hold the burette clamp, which is going to hold your burette. And your burette is what we put the titrant in, which is our solution of known concentration that we're going to titrate with. Now a titration is where you use the titrant of known concentration to add to an analyte, a solution of unknown concentration, to find the endpoint via an indicator. In our case, we're going to have two to three drops of phenylphthalein that is going to turn pink in a base. So our analyte is going to be an acid, our titrant a base, and we're going to add titrant into our analyte until it just becomes just barely basic. Our indicator turns just the lightest shade of pink. And that is going to be where we achieve our end point, where my number of hydrogen ions is equal to my number of hydroxide ions, or it's become neutral. So this is through a neutralization reaction between a base and an acid. I'm going to essentially create water and a salt. My salt will be soluble in my solution. Now to see this very faint pink occur, I'm going to have white paper underneath my Erlenmeyer flask. That way I can easily tell if a color change has occurred. So I'm going to do this in an Erlenmeyer flask and it's going to use an Erlenmeyer flask as opposed to a beaker because it has uh, the sides that are on an angle so I can swirl it and there isn't going to be any backsplash from when I put in my titrant. Next, I have my titration curves. There are three different types of acids we're going to talk about. We have monoprotic acids. These are examples of hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic, and nitric acid. All of these just have one hydrogen attached to them. Remember that a hydrogen makes something acidic. So these are going to have the one hydrogen, and that hydrogen is considered ionizable. So when it gets pulled off, we just have the one hydrogen that's pulled off. Other type is a diprotic acid. Diprotic acids are going to have two ionizable hydrogens. So I have H2SO4, H2SO3, and H2CrO4 of sulfuric, sulfurous, and chromic acid. I can have a triprotic acid where I have three ionizable hydrogens or three hydrogens attached. I have phosphoric acid and phosphorus acid. Now what these look like when you're actually doing a titration now, I have the acids are going to be my analytes. I'm putting in my titrant of a known molarity of, in this case, I'm going to use sodium hydroxide, and I add it via milliliters. My pH is going to be measured here, and you can measure pH with the pH meter. And notice that as I'm charting, the pH is going to increase as I become more basic. And at this point of inflection, where I go from a positive slope to a negative slope, this is where the end point occurs. And this is where my uh, solution has reached its end point. My number of hydrogen ions is equal to my number of hydroxide ions in my solution. So monoprotic acid will have one point of inflection. A diprotic acid is going to have two. And a triprotic acid is going to have three. So what you want to be able to do with these different types of acids is I could ask you, I could list some acids and ask you which one is which. And then you would have to tell me based off of the curve, or just knowing the definitions, which acid was monoprotic, diprotic, and triprotic. Or if I gave you an acid and asked you to sketch, just a sketch of their titration curve based on their number of hydrogens, you could sketch how many points of inflections and endpoints you would have. 